take our, our Bibles, and uh, we're, we're looking at, well, we'll go ahead and start in Galatians chapter 5, looking at the fruit of the Spirit, and then uh, when we finish this, we're going to start uh, our series, Quieting the Noisy Soul. If you've, if you've paid for the book, you're welcome to get that and the, the, the D- CD, um, but that'll be a, a few weeks off, so I'm looking forward to that. Fruit of the Spirit. I, I always find the fruit of the Spirit uh, fascinating and encouraging uh, because it's what God is, is working in my life. Uh, so let's just read the, the two verses, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. <laughs> no law against these. So now here's a list of things that uh, the Lord is producing in our lives as, as Christians. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're, we're going to look at two tonight, gentleness and goodness. Uh, I hope it doesn't confuse the issue, because they are a, a little bit similar, but um, gentleness and goodness we're going to look at tonight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I just want to show you uh, one of the statements that Paul or, or the, the Lord makes a, about Jesus here. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who am pres- in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having it in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I went ahead and ran on down there just to finish that sentence. Um, you know, as we look at these things, we need to realize these are, are the fruit of the Spirit. These are not natural abilities that we have. It, if you've been around very long, you know that there's all different kinds of people, different personalities, different character, and so on. And some people are just kind of born nice, you know. Some are born not nice. <laughs> you know, they're always struggling. And, yeah, they're just all different kinds of things. Well, that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about your natural bent of things. Uh, even nice people have to get saved and have the fruit of the Spirit and, and so on. And, and sometimes they struggle getting saved because they think, well, I'm nice. <laughs> it's the mean ones that, you know, God ha- has an easy time pointing out their sins. But uh, one of the things he's saying here in verse 1 of, of 2 Corinthians 10 is that Jesus is a gentleman. And it's important for us to understand, when we're looking at the fruit of the Spirit, we're looking at a picture of Jesus. We're looking at the character of the Lord. And it's the product he wants in our life. And it's what he's working in a spiritual way in in our life. And uh, tonight, looking at gentleness and and, and goodness, the, the, the thing that makes it a little bit confusing is the same word that is used for gentleness is sometimes translated goodness <laughs> or kindness. Um, if you look in a dictionary that, that tells you those kinds of things, uh, four times the, the word that's used for gentleness is translated kindness. It gives you a pretty good idea of what it means. Uh, when he's talking about gentleness, uh, God has showed kindness to us. It's a, it's a quality of God. Uh, I've got quite a few verses. You can turn to them or, or just listen to them. Uh, Ephesians 2 and verse 7. And this is the word, same Greek word that's used in Galatians for, uh, for gentleness. Uh, he says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Uh, the Lord is kind. The Lord is gentle uh, with us. Uh, no, that's a motorcycle. Uh, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 4, uh, he uses, again, the, the, word, the word is translated kindness. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. 
And he's been talking about our sinfulness, and, but then God's kindness kicks in. And in uh, Colossians 3, he tells us to put on kindness. Uh, I used that verse last week because it also lists long-suffering. Colossians 3, 12, put on. And, and one of the things he lists there is, is kindness. And uh, so as Christians, we need to choose to um, use this product that God is, is offering us here. Uh, Paul did. Paul chose a kindness. There's a, a list in 2 Corinthians 6 where he talks about a lot of the things that God um, used in his life. And uh, one of them was, was that area of, of kindness. Now, let me just share a verse with you. I've, I've already kind of said this, but Romans 3.12 is probably a verse you're familiar with. Uh, it's that list where he's talking about how sinful we are. In Romans 3.12, he says, They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That's the exact same word that, he's tra that is there in, in Gal Galatians, uh, goodness. And uh, you know, God is saying this is not a natural product that he's looking for here. It's a supernatural one. This is the fruit of the Spirit. And, and unfortunately, many times people really misunderstand what being good is. <laughs> uh, I, I've said this to you before. I, I've hardly ever met anybody who didn't think they were good. <laughs> You know, I mean, I've talked to people in prison, in prison for terrible things, and, you know, all, all kinds of people. If you died today, would you go to heaven? Yeah, I've been good. <laughs> uh, and we need to understand as Christians, number one, we've not been good, but God is good. And God can work that in us. God is, is his Holy Spirit is doing that, uh, that in us. Uh, it's not our character or, or our personality. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, there's four times as well that it's translated goodness. And uh, so that gives you a pretty good understanding of what gentleness is. It's the kindness and goodness of God. Uh, that's who our, our God is. Um, a couple of the verses where, where it comes up. One is Romans 2, verse 4. I'll use this again later. Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. I think that's a real important aspect of, of gentleness. God's kindness and goodness, uh, he wants us to repent. But we come to the, to the next word, which is goodness. <laughs> uh, gentleness and goodness. It's a different word. Uh, gentleness, in a sense, is goodness in action. Uh, goodness seems to me to be the, uh, the character. Uh, it's the moral base from which gentleness springs. I was looking at the material that we're going to be going through in Quieting the Noisy Soul, and uh, one of the things he, he talks about is the fact when, when we say God is good, there's a couple of things we're saying. One, we're saying he's excellent. You know, God is, is pure and holy and you know, all the things that characterize God. And you know, as I thought about that, I thought, well, that's what God is, the fruit of the Spirit he's working in us. You know, we, we receive sanctification but then we also, he, he works out that sanctification in us. He's making us more like him, more excellent. <laughs> uh, the other side of being good is, is being benevolent, you know, being good to people. And uh, God is working his fruit in us uh, to use those, uh, those same things, excellence and, and benevolence. Uh, there's a, that verse we read there in Romans that talks about the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And that we, we need to realize with goodness, it, it's, not, um, it, it's not weakness. It's not just saying, oh, you know, God will just kind of oh, ignore everything. Uh, goodness, you've probably experienced it where someone has said, now, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm doing it for your own good. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen? Maybe as a child, you know, your parents give you something that you need to eat that. It's for your own good. Now, just because someone is good doesn't always mean you enjoy what they're going to do for you. And it's the same with the Lord. Uh, it's kindly activity on our behalf. And we may not always even appreciate it, but it is good. God is always good. Uh, you could use the expression kind but firm. 
Just because God is good doesn't mean that he's going to just overlook our sin or uh, you know, not pay attention to his other, other qualities. And God's goodness meets a real need. Yeah, you've probably met people where you go in and think, oh, that was a nice person. But they didn't actually do anything for you. you know? Well, God's not like that. You don't just get an impression. God actually does things. And he meets real needs. You know, for instance, salvation. Um, uh, this is a fruit of the Spirit we're, we're talking about, and it, it comes from the Lord. Uh, the word is, is used as well in Ephesians 5, verse 9. And he, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. It's a, a prime characteristic. In uh, Romans 15 and, and verse 14. He says, I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness. That's an interesting statement. You can spend a lot of time thinking about that. Filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Now, why is he able to say that? Because they're Christians. They have the Holy Spirit. And what he's trying to encourage them to do is, don't just think you can't do these things. Don't think you can't have discernment and you know, the, the things that need to be done as Christians in a church and, and so on. Uh, he says, you, you've got what you need to do the job God, God calls you to do. The fruit of the Spirit, uh, very important for us to have an understanding that it's, it's what God is producing in our lives. And it comes from his character. It comes from him. There's a, there's a verse in, in Luke 6, verse 35, that I think really uh, characterizes how this is true of the Lord. Luke 6, verse 35. It's uh, similar to where you, you read in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Luke 6, 35, he says, But love ye, love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. That word kind is, is the word, is one of the words that is there in, in the fruit of the Spirit. God, God is kind to everybody. Um, Matthew eleven thirty 30, he says, even his yoke is easy and his burden light. You know, when he puts a yoke on us, he, he does it gently because he's gentle and good. Um, you, you see it in Jesus, you know, of course, in his life. With just about any of these qualities, a good way to understand them is to read the life of Jesus, and, and you know they're true of him. So you know he's not going to say or do anything that's going to contradict these. So even when Jesus is casting people out of the temple, he's doing it gentle and good. <laughs> All right? Uh, in, take a look at John chapter 8, for instance. John chapter 8 and verse 1. And what that should say to you is, maybe I don't quite understand what gentle and good are. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't always mean that you're just laying back and doing nothing. John chapter 8 and verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and rode in the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. 
Now, to, to me, that's, that's a great example of you know, his gentleness and his goodness. Mm -hmm. He dealt with the sin, but he did it in a different way than you might think. Uh, you see it in God. You see it in Jesus. Uh, you see it in Paul, as we read there in, in Corinthians, how that he, uh, you know, he wanted to deal with them in, uh, let's see, what was the words used? In, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. They had lots of problems. <laughs> and he could have, you know, really, really given it to them. But he wanted to deal with it in a, in a Christ-like way. There's a, a passage in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 7, where he says much the same thing uh, to that church. 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 2, verse 7. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. Uh, that's gentle, isn't it? That, that's good. And it's a blessing to, to see it in, in action there. Uh, so we, we're getting an, under, uh, an idea of gentleness and goodness. It has to do with the character of God. You know, God is good. And that being lived out in our lives. Uh, the kindness of God to us and, and, and through us. And like I mentioned, I think a lot of times this idea of gentleness and goodness is, is misunderstood. A lot of people think that they're good. Uh, there's a proverb that says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. <laughs> and we'll all say, oh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, most people think they're good, but goodness comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from us. Uh, it's, it's not compromise and, and weakness. And Jesus cleared the temple. He, he was willing to deal with something pretty, pretty clearly. Um, and I think a lot of times we excuse our lack of gentleness and goodness uh, with a lot of different excuses. Sometimes we say, well, it's just, it's just the way I am. I'm just a kind of a rough person. Um, I had to deal with the issue uh, of sarcasm. Do you know what sarcasm is? Uh, I looked it up. The word actually means to tear the flesh. <laughs> uh, you know, as Christians, I, I think there's some things we should avoid. Now, there's times, and, and there's people who, you know, they... They talk to people, to the, each other certain ways, and uh, that's between them. But I found as a pastor, uh, I can't be careless with my words because I want people to believe my words. Yet, yet if I'm always joking with my words, then when I say something serious, they may not believe me. And uh, I'm kind of inclined to be, you know, dry humor, sarcasm, and that kind of thing. So I, I've had to really think about it. And uh, I'm not, not saying that I don't ever fail. I, I do. But, uh, yeah, we need to be careful with our words because we, with our words, we're going to be gentle and good. And, uh, you know, if we're going to use sarcasm, we're going to tear people's flesh. Uh, th there's another proverb. Let me, I didn't write this one down. And I think this one applies. It's Proverbs 26, verse 18. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? You can apply that to sarcasm and words. You know, oh, I'm just kidding. You know, we're just having fun. Uh, be careful. Uh, the world's standard of good is, is different than God's standard of good. L look at Matthew 5, and I'll, I'll show you in a couple of verses, I think, the difference between the world's standard and God's standard in this. Matthew 5, verse 43 Here's the world standard. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. To the world, that's the norm. You, you love your friends, you hate your enemies. The, the whole uh, sermon that Jesus preached here, he's saying, Here's what you think, but here's, here's what I say. Well, here's verse 44. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that, that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, so there's God's standard. 
Uh, in, in Timothy, he puts it this way, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and, and so on. Uh, in James, he said, the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Uh, we need the fruit of the Spirit in dealing with each other. Uh, gentle, good. Uh, I think you can say from Titus chapter 3 and verse 2 that the opposite is being a brawler. Chapter 3, verse 2. Instead of being gentle and good, some people are just you know, they're looking for a fight. In uh, Titus 3, 2, he says, uh, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. And uh, you know, while we need to stand for what's right, uh, we don't want to be, I guess I would use the word argumentative. We don't want to just always be arguing about things. Um, some of my grandkids went through a time when it didn't matter what you said to them, something else was true. Of course, you know, all the world's wisdom is bound up in a four-year-old. Uh, it gets pretty wearisome. You can imagine what it must be like for the Lord, hearing from us all the time about how he's wrong. Uh, the Bible says we must not strive. The servant of the Lord must not strive. We're not in it for a fight. Uh, sometimes we look at what is the norm, and, and it can be deceptive. You know, we can be raised a certain way, or we can be in a certain culture, and, and so on. The, you know, the peer pressure uh, that comes. And sometimes we can do some pretty bad things uh, just because everyone else does it, and we need to be careful. Be careful who influences your behavior. Uh, be willing to be different if that means being like the Lord. Um, sometimes what's generally accepted are are not accepted by the Lord. Uh, in my own life, I'd have to say, I've, I've experienced gentleness and goodness uh, from some of the people I've worked with. Uh, when I first went into the ministry, I was 20 years old and uh, said a lot of dumb things, did a lot of stupid things. Uh, but the pastor I worked for was very uh, kind to me. He was, he was gentle and good to me. Uh, then when I came to Australia, I was, I was 26 when I came to Australia. I was still dumb and st stupid and all those things. I probably still am. But, uh, and the people we worked with were, were older. They seemed really old. They were probably 45, <laughs> something like that. Uh, and, and they were gentle and good to us. And uh, yeah, that's a blessing. I've tried to, to be that same way with uh, younger people that, that, that I'm around. Yeah, but the key is this. We, we want to be like the Lord. You know, God is good. That, that's a simple prayer we teach children, and it, because it's true. God is gentle. He's kind. And when Colossians says, put on kindness, it means we can. If we're saved, that God's Holy Spirit is wanting to work that fruit in us. You know, he's, you know, the fruit is ready to pop if we'll just, we'll just let it. Uh, we have the resources. We have the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, His Spirit wants to produce those same qualities in us. And what a blessing it is that, that he can do that. Any comments or, or questions before we, we quit? I've got a little bit longer than normal.